Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today I've got some really exciting news to share with you and it's kind of been the reason why I've been a little bit quiet of late on YouTube. I've been just knuckling down on this new project and today I'm going to share with you a little teaser of what it's all about. So the short of it is we've created a new mesh system. Yep, you heard me right. I've collaborated with Scott from Ripple, he makes the Ripple firmware, and we've come up with a thing called MeshCore. Now MeshCore is the fundamental software that underlies the mesh. It basically controls where all the messages go and it controls all the routing. Now one of the main reasons we've done this is to basically solve the problems that MeshTastic has, where the routing just doesn't work, messages don't get where they're supposed to get, and DM messaging is absolutely awful. Basically, without going into too much detail, MeshCore has proper routing. So when you send a message out, it will work out the best route for your packet to get to that destination. And that route will remain persistent until something changes, maybe like one of the repeaters goes down or something like that. So this is gonna increase the reliability of message delivery tenfold. I mean, this algorithm is so slick, it's so quick, it uses a tiny amount of bandwidth or airtime. It is really quite something amazing. MeshCore is fully open source. We're gonna be releasing the code on GitHub soon, and we're encouraging developers to get on board and make cool apps for it as well. Right, so a quick teaser then. You can see here we've got two LilyGo T-Deck Pluses and a LilyGo T5. They are all running MeshCore network profile, basically. You can see here MeshCore on the screen. So basically, these are all gonna be able to talk to each other really simply on the group messaging system here. You can see here, this is the public channel. Um, the little two there shows you the number of hops that message came in from. Um, so you've got some quite intelligent ways of seeing what's been delivered and what hasn't. Um, so back to the other screen, you've got obviously got maps here as well, which shows obviously the um, the GPS data of the of the TDEX. We're using the TDEX as main devices really because the they've got a lovely screen. You've got a nice keyboard. It's got everything built in, GPS, nice battery. So you haven't got to put anything together. The T-Decks just work um, so well with this, with this setup. So just a quick one about how MeshCore works. MeshCore is centered around repeaters. So this is a Heltec V3 in a Zero Fox case here. Um, and basically you just stick that up somewhere, put it in a, um, put it in your loft or you know, put it in a weatherproof box. It's gonna be rack supported as well, so you can make a nice solar um, powered repeater. But basically this is how MeshCore works. It relies on repeaters. So repeaters automatically get discovered, but one cool thing you can do is you can actually um, administer your repeater from the actual T-Deck as well. So at the moment we've got some information up here um, it's showing 16 millivolts because it's been powered up by USB. Um, but you can get information on the repeater there, its location. You can even do things like um, reboot as well. I don't think that's included in this firmware. But yeah, basically you can manage all your repeaters directly from um, AT deck and they'll work across the mesh. It's all password protected and this is of course fully encrypted end to end. And each message is signed. So there's no way of forging messages on this system at all. So the firmwares for the T-Deck and T-Deck Plus will be available very, very soon. As I say, this is just a teaser video to show you what's coming. Um, and these firmwares will be installable via SD card. So this is super cool. It makes it really, really easy to install firmware, uh, this firmware on the T-Deck. And map tiles and stuff like that are all stored uh, on the SD card. So this is really good. Because of the SD card storage, there's no limits on node lists. Like it won't get to 100 and then reset like we've seen you know, recently happen here. And of of course, this also means there's no limitations on packet routes um, which can be stored on these devices. So another thing I can show you briefly here is the discover list. So this is a bit like your node list if you're used to that kind of terminology um, with MeshTastic. So there's basically you know all of the devices that you can you've heard over the air on here. And so we've got mobile repeater and Hartford, those are the two repeaters I've got set up. Um, mobile repeater is this one here, and we've got uh, the T5 and the other T deck, so you can see that there. The little zero by the side of it is actually showing you that you're zero hops away from um, these devices, which you'd expect because they're all all in sort of close proximity. You can dive into a particular um, node or or repeater, and you can see the you know the the position. And there's there's scope for adding so much other data here. You you know you can add whatever you like, um, and it will show in there. Um, there's other um, things here. You can obviously go to the map. 
um, and see the map view and show that on the map, which is really nice. Um, and then obviously if we go back to Discover, back to Hartford there, um, the other things you can do is reset the clock, the advert clock, which I'll come on to in a second. So adverts basically are a bit like kind of like a node beacon broadcast kind of ID, but they contain lots of information about the key and everything else. So unlike Meshtastic, which basically spits out um, beacons and information and stuff so much. I mean, look at the channel utilization on, on this. It's up to look 50% in this area. And that makes things really difficult to deal with. Um, so it's just a hell of a lot of traffic flying around. Um, and yeah, that's just generally not a good thing. It's gonna clog things up. This doesn't do that. Um, in fact, there's just periods of time where it's just completely silent. So this is the key thing about MeshCore. It only sends the essential data it needs to send to actually kind of function. Um, so basically using the example in the beginning, if you send a message out and it knows the route it's got to go, it's not going to flood everything with that message. It's only going to target the repeaters that it needs to target to get to where it's meant to get to, i.e. the node on the other end. So most of the time it doesn't flood everything. It will actually use clever direct routing to actually get a packet from A to B. And what's more, if you've got somebody that's got like a repeater up somewhere or a node that's repeating and it shouldn't be, it's in a bad position and it's actually being detrimental um, to the mesh, you could actually potentially demote that repeater from doing that so that you can actually carry on with a successful mesh. Because let's face it, if you are an avid mesh user, you'll know about that repeater down the road that's just repeating everything and creating ridiculous amounts of traffic. It's just annoying. So overall, I think this could be the future of a completely open mesh, um, not controlled by any particular organization. Anyway, there's a huge amount of stuff to discuss with this for those that are interested in this. And I'm gonna create a separate channel on my Discord, uh, separate mesh core channel so that we can chat about this uh, on there. And also, I'm going to start with kind of asking some of the locals. I think you know who you are. Um, if you want to get involved testing this out, I've been doing some testing locally with a few repeaters and everything else. Um, and so maybe <laughs> the immediate local area, you know, you might be able to sort of get going straight away with this. But anyway, we'll be there on the Discord to chat through stuff and the software and stuff will probably be available there first, actually. Um, and then we're gonna sort of maybe do like a video launch um, properly about this with a website, web flasher and all that sort of stuff. But that's probably gonna come later. For now, this is just me just going, I just wanna get something out there. <laughs> and also Scott did as well, because he's been working like literally 24 seven on this. I don't know when that guy sleeps. Um, but yeah, super exciting stuff, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I think that's about it. And yeah, enjoy. Oh yeah, by the way, go and check out Scott's post that he's just put up on his blog. Um, I'll leave the link below in the description. He goes into it a, a little bit more detail on there. Um, clever, clever guy. Catch you later.